I'm Suzanne Murdoch and welcome to Series 2 of Powering Productivity. Each episode I explore the energy that connections, expertise and being in your best flexible working environments can bring to not just your business but to your whole life. So let's get started. Welcome, I'm your host Suzanne Murdoch and today I'm joined by the lovely Mel Wiggins who's been creating the most amazing coaching business from a little seed of an idea to a strong and thriving community serving women across the UK, Europe and beyond since 2016. Before this, Mel worked in non-profit management and activism roles before taking the leap to pivot her career to work with women who want to be more courageous in both their lives and in their work. And I was sneaky, I have to be honest, I did with that from your website because I was like that sounds familiar (laughs) such great wording but my favorite part on your bio is when you refer to challenging the narratives and boundaries that hold us back both in our culture and within ourselves I thought that Mm. was really prevalent and I think a lot of women would really resonate with that Mm. so Mel how are you I'd love to hear a little bit about your story and what lights you up what you what your purpose is here Mm. How you got to where you are now? Mm. Well, um, I appreciate you asking me to to chat. I always love a good a good yarn, especially with another female business owner or someone who's in that space. Um, there's lots to talk about. So I, yeah, so I grew up, um, very aware of uh, social issues. I came from a social work family, and so. Um, Once I finished university, I did a youth work, uh, community work degree. And once I finished that, I entered into nonprofit work. So I worked in that space for, you know, most of my career up until 2016, um, doing various youth work roles and management roles um, within within Northern Ireland, in Canada, um, where I my family lived for a time and then um in London as well so did some inner city work uh, in London um and then settled in Northern Ireland um when my husband and I got together and uh established a, a project looking at research and response to the issue of human trafficking and um and modern day slavery so uh, that was my that was my heart and soul and my blood, sweat and tears for the guts of 10 years um, establishing this project. It was there was nothing like that was happening in Northern Ireland before. Um, and yes, but it was a huge, hugely steep learning curve um, managing funding and networking and working with government and on policy and training professionals and (laughs) creating resources on this very very unknown um issue at least here in Northern Ireland at the time um so it was very exciting it was very fulfilling and it was very um intense uh and I enjoyed it so so much it was it was like my first child before I had children was this project (laughs) um and it gave me it gave me such a a breadth of experience of how to manage people how to start something from scratch so it gave me that kind of entrepreneurial kind of you know it scratched that itch in me you know um and and it was making a difference, you know, it was really making a difference, which was hugely important to me. And I guess that's um, how I landed here was, although the work that I do now, which is coaching women, women who want to build values led businesses, um, it on the surface looks very different, right? Like it, mm-hmm. that the rules that I had in activism and community work are different to what I'm doing now the ethos is still the same you know the ethos the ethos of um helping people to um really live freely in their potential um and to to do brave work is really at the at the heart of of all of the work that I've done I suppose is to that that, that, that's actually what I picked up on is that similar thread there is the bravery the courageous side of it and the whole empathy 
side mm-hmm. in both both the areas that you've worked in that really does move through mm. both mm. yeah it's massively massively important to me and I think um stepping into a completely different career um in my late 30s was you know it felt kind of vulnerable and but I you know I'm I'm someone who there's a lot there's a pattern to how things have kind of happened in my life when I look back you know and it's been you know establishing I'm very much uh, I love to pioneer I love to start and establish and um create things from scratch uh, and I you know I've really I really I really have enjoyed that that process with this with this coaching business as well um and I think the difference with this is that I now have the full autonomy to to create and create and and recreate in my business as well which is what I love and to do that in a way that feels um that feels really aligned with my values and my boundaries and um yeah and that full autonomy I guess and I feel like that is brave that is brave work that you have to be to be to kind of not do things the way maybe the handbook tells you but to create to create a business and a life on your own terms is brave work and I guess that's what I'm I'm really really interested in absolutely and I'd love to pick up on that whole bravery and the courageous and breaking down barriers later on because I think that's a really key thing for for um, entrepreneurs and business owners but and this month I've been exploring a lot about the whole retention planning and repurposing in our business and I guess for me it comes down to like sustainability and our energy and like you said aligning ourselves mm. with our values um, and not just looking at our existing client base but also how we as the business owners show up in our business are we really being ourselves or, or are we being what's expected of us and, comp- mm. and comparing ourselves to others the whole time? And I think my big thing, which I've only really learned to do recently, is to stop almost pretending to be someone that I'm not, stop comparing myself to others that might be doing similar things. Mm. You know, I bring, I bring my own skill set, my own personality. Um, I know I'm an introverted business owner, but that, does, that doesn't necessarily have to hold me back. That means I can mm. bring other other skill sets um and I also really learning and understanding and constantly checking in about what gives me that energy and what drains me and actually at different times of the day you know when when is my energy more prevalent so what can I do I think it's just really about knowing yourself and constantly checking in and knowing that you change over over yeah. the years yeah you do for sure and especially for for women that's I think that's absolutely imperative you know we we have cycles in our in our bodies that are very real that we have to be really realistic about and what you know like I'm very tuned in now I wasn't before but really tuned in now to what my body needs at at certain points in the cycle in my hormone cycle um because there are there are things at different points throughout the month in my body that I am just I just don't have the capacity for and I'm I'm and I think that this comes down to the fact that we haven't had much modeling of that as women right so we have if we've taken the leap to start a business often the only models that we've been shown have been based on what men are doing um and that's that's just not going to work for us it just isn't we're not men (laughs) we're not we don't men have a 24-hour hormone cycle we have a 30 day (laughs) hormone cycle um and so how we operate is always going to be very different and um we also have I think a lot more complexity and nuance to our lives in terms of what's expected of us and our responsibilities um and so it is absolutely like what you said um we have to check in regularly and notice and note and and understand ourselves and you know I think I think that self-awareness as a business owner is hugely important um but so many of us are just kind of running businesses based on like a an old outdated model of 
how you do things and not really grasping and exercising the full autonomy of being a woman in business um, that can recreate and shape this to however she wants it to look um, and still be successful and still feel fulfillment. Um, And I think that when we try to adapt to what has been handed to us as business models, um, we actually, that's how women end up being burnt out and, and actually feeling that they're inadequate as a business owner. And it's not that they're inadequate, it's that they haven't had the opportunity or felt the permission to slow down, to check in, to acknowledge their desires and needs, to create and, and execute their boundaries, to <laughs> be smart um, about how they work. So I'm, I feel really passionate about that. No, me, absolutely, I do as well. And I think, I think if you can really grasp yourself and have that self-awareness and be able to move with those ebbs and throws, ebbs and flows through the month, I think yeah. that can make you a really strong person. And yeah. I, think, I think it allows you to, to show so many aspects of you as an individual. So for example, certain times in the month, you can be more creative, you can do your writing and then other times you're more dynamic you've got that um that buzz and that energy so you can I don't know get certain tasks different sorts of tasks done but there's so many different sides to us and I think it's it's having that awareness and actually feeling feeling free enough and open enough to be able to speak about these things as well because it was such a taboo area of hormones don't 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 go there don't talk about hormones don't talk about womanly things well it's been weaponized against us it's almost like oh she's not going to be performing well you know six days out of the out of the month because of this Hmm. and actually it's 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 been weaponized and and been used as some sort of like justification that we're not competent in certain at certain times when actually when you have a business of your own you can decide to shuffle your work around so you know whenever I have whenever I'm on my period I don't want to be sitting in long zoom calls <laughs> like I don't right like why can we not talk about this freely this happens to half the population why are we not talking about this openly that it's a real thing that we have to you know and we get to you know, filter into our business and make it integral to how we work because, you know, it's, it's caring, it's, it's honoring of our bodies. And it's like actually empowering when we really kind of flip it on its head and see it as an opportunity to like exercise our business autonomy that we can take those, take that space and rest and look after ourselves. Yeah, and I think talking about it openly with our friends and family as well. But thank God for the likes of Davina McCall about really mm. promoting women's women's health and the different stages through life. But I mean, we talk a lot. We're talking a lot about energy in business, and I know um, you do a lot of work around the whole repurposing, um, mapping processes and that sort of thing, and funnels and workflows, and, and making things more seamless so that we can. Mm-hmm use our energy and our skill set but we haven't got to constantly duplicate everything we're doing so that's that's one area that I know we can oh yeah use, use our time really efficiently and smartly absolutely I think so you know the I think the the social media social media being such a amazing tool for businesses now also means that um we feel like we have to be creating all the time creating content all the time and actually I don't well particularly for me in my in my business which is a service-based business that is based around quite midi concepts um, and teaching and learning um, I don't think it's in my best interest or even in my clients best interest to be churning out content and having to be like having to be profound every day like it's just not natural you know like we have to actually you know our everybody's lives are so busy and full that I want my content and what I do put out there in the world to have to become a body of work rather than churned out content that just kind of passes somebody's eyes and keeps going I want people to come to my content and 
take it and chew on it and think about it and integrate it. And we have lost a bit of that um, ability to integrate because we are so used to seeing post after post after post after post and scroll and scroll and read and go, oh, that's amazing and scroll or save and or share and then we're done. And we're not actually absorbing and integrating any of any of this stuff in. So I, I don't want to contribute to that noise. So my, my kind of system of content um, and of messaging is very strategically long and gives like many different touch points where you can engage with the same thing, right? Um, and I also think that that's, it's smart because it actually establishes you as an authority rather than someone who's just saying something all the time, something different all the time. Um, and, and, and it's what I teach as well, is that this kind of idea of slow marketing that is more about depth than it is about uh, churning out is really, really important in building your authority as a business owner and in your field. Um, and I talk to my clients about the concept of working hard once work hard once, create content once that is going to have legs that you can um, dissect and repurpose into other areas, right? So my main content is my podcast um, and I, I write a script for that and I, you know, include a lot in that, give a lot of value in that. And then that, that podcast gets uh, repurposed into a blog post a newsletter, an Instagram post, a story, a reel, whatever, um, you know, but I've worked hard once at that uh, and I'm, and I'm going to cycle that one podcast episode through a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Rather than feeling like I have to come up with something really incredible every single day or, you know, in some cases the Instagram you know strategists are saying twice a day i'm like no thank you no it's just draining i do not know how people do that and still keep creative Gen it's not what, it's not healthy it's not healthy it? It, and it's not genuine either no you know how can you truly engage with those people that when they're not coming across genuinely well it becomes yeah. then it becomes more about performance to mm -hmm. me i'm performing a show every day just so people can see it right but rather I think, I think than when, having when something to, to add to the conversation. Yeah, and when you're doing that long-form podcast or blog, I think it's really interesting. I've started going back um, to other podcasts and blogs I've done, and you look at it from a different perspective as well. So, yes, you can take snippets, but you you can also re regurgitate it if you want and look at it from a different perspective because the body sure. of work is still there and that doesn't take too much of your energy up. Or take snippets and put it, put those parts into a blog that you're doing that month, for example. So you can reference it as well. Yeah. And there's just so many tools out there now that that are so worth investing a little bit of money a month to subscribe to, to be to kind of make your work easier, you know, transcribing podcasts so you're not typing things out, you know, like <clears throat> workflow systems. You know, I can't say that I'm an expert in that at all. Like I have... I have hired in for that work. So I have an amazing operations coordinator that runs all of that kind of systems and operations side of my business um, and has created some beautiful like workflows that, that removes me from the kind of back end of the business uh, so that I'm not, I'm not swimming in admin and manual tasks and I can actually spend my time thinking about what is what are the messages that I want to put out there to make sure that people know what my work is about and that I'm establishing my authority so that clients feel safe with me and they want to work with me and they recognize the value of the work that I do. Because um, if I'm in the back of this and I'm just like forwarding things and I'm like <laughs> manually, you know, like, I don't know, honestly, so many things that I used to do manually that I don't anymore like it, it has absolutely freed me up and I think it's those are the kind of things that I would love every female business owner to feel free 
to invest in and know that the return is going to be so, so, so much for them, you know, because nobody gets into a business wanting to fiddle about with their Squarespace website, unless that's what you do, oh, I completely, right? No, I completely get that. <coughs> but here's the thing. So there's a lot of people would have barriers to handing over certain aspects of their business to yeah, experts, I get that. knowing that in the long run, it's going to save them time and money, but you're handing over your baby, you know, and how do you break those barriers down bit by bit and take those first steps and hand, hand something over and delegate it? Because I, I mean, I really struggled at the beginning and now I've mm-hmm. learned, well, here, you have to do that or your business isn't going to grow. You can't shine your light on what you do well if you're mm-hmm. caught up in all those stupid things that you know mm-hmm. that you don't do well. I think when I first started doing that was, it was like I had to hold it as a bit of an experiment. So, you know, it was a freelancer that I hired for like five hours a month or something to like um, set up my email workflow system like or email sequencing right so like a welcome sequence for any new email subscribers and um I had a I have a membership and so she was setting up the membership welcome f- workflow and that you know all of these different systems were talking to each other and all this kind of stuff and to be honest when I first I remember first having a call with this person this virtual assistant and she's like what so what is it that you need help with and I didn't even know what to say I was like I need you to look in at my business and you tell me like you tell me what I need help with so I then was like here this is what I'm doing this manually and then I'm adding this person to this spreadsheet and then I add them into this and the and she's like oh no 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 we don't (laughs) we don't do that there are apps and there are tools for this um and I was like okay like I'm going to experiment with having this person who clearly knows way more than I do um, do five hours a month for a couple of months and see how that goes, see what difference that makes. And it was from there that it was like incrementally, I was like, yep, okay, let's add some more hours. Here, there's more stuff. Let's add to your role um, until it was established as a proper role within it, you know, within my team. Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> um. And I think, you know, I totally understand that feeling of, oh, this is my, this is my beautiful business that I, you know, anything that goes out into the world is representative of me. And I I need to make sure that this person gets that. Um, and so when that, that virtual assistant that I was talking about, when she, when it was time for her to move on and into her own business in a fuller way so she wasn't doing client work anymore I had to find somebody else and actually that was really scary because I was like oh god I've actually I really have I really am so reliant on having somebody in this role now that I you know I can't go back to and it's doing this stuff more myself scary, isn't it that for me is more scary is yes you hand a part over and you realize how well that person does it and then you've got to go navigate the whole new, and you know nothing about that person yeah. Well, you don't. So, you might know their experience, but you don't know how, what perspective they're going to take on that role you've given them. Yeah. So we had like this whole, you know, that that VA was incredible about helping me find the neck, like her replacement. So she, you know, we did a really comprehensive recruitment for that that role because it was, you know, so there were like really, like there was three steps to it. There was an application that was really you know, full on in terms of like, I want to know your Enneagram number, like what's, you know, not just a, what's your experience. Then there was like, um, you know, and it was stuff around like values and stuff around like, um, you know, what kind of work have you done around empowering women is, you know, that kind of stuff. And then there was like a practical task for like, we kind of filtered from the applications into like a test so creating landing pages, what would you do for this workflow? Just to make sure that, you know, they really could, like, that their work really checked out, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, then we invited to interview. Uh, and then, I get, you know, you get enough of a fail from interview um, and have ended up with an incredible operations coordinator who I just adore um, and has been so, so helpful 
that you know she often like more often than not when we have a team meeting on a Monday she brings the agenda and that's what I love like she I'm not I'm not showing up to that meeting going I need you to do this I need you to do that she's saying to me okay this is coming up this week for you you need to this is what I need you to do in order for this um to happen you need to send me the copy for this you need to do for that um and I love, love, love that because it feels like someone else really has stakes in your business with you, right? Instead of yeah. it just being you always responsible for everything, even the delegation. Um, she's so competent that she's, you know, she sets the agenda. Like we have a meeting today and she has like, she already has the agenda set. I've just looked at the notes for the agenda of what we're going to talk about. And she's looking ahead at what's coming up and, and helping me prepare for that as well so it really That's does fantastic. feel I think a lot of that is down to aligning the values as well it is so what other way when we talked about breaking down barriers and courage earlier what other areas do you see in terms of barriers for for women in business what have you seen in the past what would be the most common that keeps coming up I would say visibility and selling uh, I see it as the most, one of the most, um, most vulnerable areas for women and where they feel they don't have the skills or they don't have the, they don't have the like courage to be visible with their work and ask people to buy it or to, to, to work with them, to buy from them. They feel really self-conscious about it. They, you know, it's, it's the kind of, and this is, I think this is where my sweet spot is. I can kind of feel the fizziness rising up in me right at the minute in my body. As I talk about this, my sweet spot is working with women who feel really ambitious about their work and are struggling with visibility. So is there there a particular area that they're struggling with? So for personally, I would really struggle to get up on that traditional stage and give your speech to hundreds of people but if I'm doing a video a long form video explaining what I do who it can help what your outcomes will be I feel to me that's completely natural and that's mm. part actually I, I felt more natural through lockdown because we're so used to being on video etc and talking to you now I'm calm but if you ask me to get up off the, onto that stage and um, do a live talk I would just clam up wouldn't I wouldn't be able to start I'd either clam up or waffle yeah I mean that's I mean that's totally natural as well Um, and of course for every every female business owner it's going to be a different aspect of that because often our work is so personal right our create what we're creating is so personal we felt a real call to it like we felt a real like oh I would love to have an interior shop or oh I would absolutely love to like help people with their copywriting or, Oh, I just, I know I'm good at art. I would love, I would just love to make a full-time income from this art creation that I am good at. Um, And it comes from that deep place. So, uh, so when we then go to try and kind of share that with other people, it's like the risk is so high, right? What if, what if people don't like it? What if I come across as pushy what if I come across as needy what if um I come across as greedy what is there you know like what if people think that it's rubbish what if people think what is she doing you know all all of these narratives all of these thoughts and they are universal with women they really are women that are are showing up and putting their work out there for it to be seen heard and bought um and so you know, of course it's going to feel terrifying because we are putting these like beautiful, very close and precious things to us out into the world. Um, ultimately for people to have opinions on. And that's, that is what's going to happen. People, and you know, there's no denying it. There's no getting around it. Um, and so there's a bit of like courage that needs to be built there. And that, I think that that comes with time and it comes with, um, practice and it comes with understanding our own triggers and it comes with 
being okay that our work is not for everybody um, and that other people's opinions only really tell us about their preferences, doesn't really tell us anything about our work. What, what about finding your right audience? You know, who do you, really examining yourself and understanding, who do you want to talk to? Who gets you? Who gets what you're doing? Who would really thrive with what you're doing? How, you know, who, who would it help? And again, who, who are you aligned with? Would that, does that, mm-hmm. for, for me, that often helps when I think about that. Absolutely, that helps. And, you know, I, but I think that that is, often we try to outsource that. And what I mean by that is we kind of um, look to the people who are already following us or watching what we're doing or connected with us. And then we start asking them, like, what would you like to see? What's like, what do you like? What would you what would be helpful for you to, for me to do rather than us going, what do I what feels aligned for me? What's calling me to be created? What do I really want to say in this space? What do I want to offer? What do I know in my heart of hearts is actually the next brave move in my business? And then start to kind of communicate that. And I think that what happens with that, and I kind of explain this as you, when you feel like that real alignment within yourself first, right? it activates a magnet. So it activates a magnet and a magnet is not just the drawing in. It's also the repelling. Uh So when the magnet is activated because you are being loyal to your idea and the, and the kind of burning thing that you want to do and you start to be visible with that, it's going to activate the magnet of people coming towards you who are on board, are ready to hear what you have to say or do, who want what you've got. And it's also going to move people away from you who are just not ready for that or who are not interested in that anymore, you know, and that's okay. That's okay too. Um, But the most important part of that whole kind of creating an audience thing is that you're true to yourself first. And you allow people to come towards that thing based on a real steady, grounded, aligned version of who you are and what you're doing. And actually, when you let that happen naturally, the whole communication piece becomes that bit easier and natural. Yeah. And you can, and you can communicate on a platform that you feel comfortable with, not necessarily standing on that stage. Yeah, absolutely. That might not be how that audience absorbs that information. You know, they're not they're not there. That's not where you're going to find them. Yeah, and I think you know, stop thinking about how everyone else is going to receive it, and think about how you want to feel when you're communicating it, mm-hmm. because that's what's going to translate them with the most power, authenticity, and magnetism. If you're trying to crowbar yourself to kind of well, I know that, you know, people who are in business and da 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 are on LinkedIn, then I better try and show up there and, you know, navigate that stuff. When even though you don't feel like a very LinkedIn connected person, <laughs> right? And that space doesn't feel very natural to you and you can't actually show up. There's not the mechanisms in that space to show up the way you like to. Um, and I don't, I actually don't even think that, you know, the way, there's it's often talked about that you know where are your where are your where's your audience hanging out I think they're everywhere now there's not you know it's not specific to to different platforms like oh all the creative people are on Instagram or, or all the you know very professional people are on LinkedIn or you know Facebook is better for these people blah 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 I don't think that's true anymore and I actually think that can really stall a lot of people because they're kind of overthinking where they need to show up and I think again return to yourself where do you like to be where feels good for you where do you where do you feel more most excited playful energized connected aligned start there keep it simple because when your energy is good for that that's going to come across and and your audience and people like they're everywhere they're on all of the platforms yeah, they absolutely are. Well, this might be a big, a big question, but I mean, we, we talk a lot about branding 
and strategy and you should be doing it this way, you should be doing it that way. But how can we be really realistic with ourselves and the time we have and where we should be putting our focus? So if we have a new business idea, for example, and we need to be true to ourselves, but we have to get that branding right, we have to get that strategy right, where do you, where do you start? So I know that's a big question, but mm. how, do you, how can you be honest with yourself in terms of the time and where you should be putting that time to start up those ideas? Oh, it is a big question. I think my, my first port of call is, is often, if, if the idea has come from me and I'm not asking about the idea itself, but it would be to find out from my community or the people who are already connected to my work, the kind of hot of that, right? So I've got an idea. So for example, at the beginning of the year, I had, I just felt this real strong sense of wanting to gather women more, um, especially female business owners in person. And I, and I, I've, I hosted a retreat in October and it was magical. My, my business started by in-person events. Um, and I wanted to try and I wanted to see if there was an appetite for that again. So the idea was mine. As in, like, I wasn't reaching out to my community to help them, to get them to tell me what to do. The idea came from me, from here. And it was from there that I was like, okay, I need to find out some more information from my people about whether this is something that they would be interested in, what format they would like that to be what would make sense for them, what stuff they're struggling with that I can address within that retreat space. Um, and so I sent out a female business owner survey um, and got like, I think it was close to 100 responses, full of in- amazing information. And from there, it's been able to help me strategize. So I'm hearing from my people saying, these are the top things that we're struggling with. Um, so now I know that I can address those things. This is the format of a retreat or a day away or a whatever that we think would work. I can create, I can create that. I know that I can create that. And then everything kind of after that is really experiment in the beginning, I think. And we don't give we, I don't think we give ourselves enough space to experiment and be okay with play in our business sometimes I think we hold things so seriously and I know that for a lot of people the stakes do feel high and there's you know they maybe are investing in their business and you know they've put lots of money into it or whatever and play doesn't feel like a natural thing um to prioritize but if at all possible in some way, I think it's important to recognize that business is changing so, so much. There's not one way to do it. It's changing all the time. There is no perfect and right formula or way to do it for you. And that there has to be an element of experiment involved that we can be okay with. Because how else do you learn? How else do you know? You're not going to get it perfect and right out of the gate absolutely and I think that the key thing for me there is the whole flexibility because everything is changing so much so quickly if we look at the the area I work in flexible workspaces oh my god the last two years has, has mm. pushed things forward so much quicker than the last 10 years in our industry mm. Um, and we've had to be really really quick and innovative but open to that the ebbs and flows there and moving on and I think I've really, I've really embraced that because I absolutely thrive on that sort of thing. Mm, um, adapting. And... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where, that's where my sweet spot is, is helping others embrace that and find that right balance for them and their, their teams. Mm. But it's not easy and you're com- you are constantly looking at what are, what are they doing? What are they thinking about me? Have I done that wrong? And it's very, very easy to flick into that negative mode and the... Um, protective mm. mode rather than completely the opposite and embracing change and going with your flow and your natural gut reaction yeah 
Oh yeah, totally. And you know, I think uh, scarcity has a lot to do with that. You know, a lot of the messages we receive as women and also t- today in our culture is about scarcity. There's not enough of this. This is going to this is going to this is this impending cost rise, etc. And actually a lot of that stuff, yep, there's some reality to what's happening in the world, but there is more than enough out there. There is more than enough money. There's more than enough clients. There's more than enough business uh, for all of us. Uh, really, it's about, a lot of it is about building bravery and courage and resilience to stay in um and and keep trying um as long as that feels healthy for us right to keep doing that to keep trying you know because there is plenty out there for everybody um there just is there just is and there's only one of you and what you bring and the way Mm. you bring it yeah only one unique you what Mm. what's next in the courageous world for for mal wiggins Mm. so I I have a female business owner retreat coming up next month and I'm super excited about it here in Northern Ireland uh so I've rented a beautiful property in the countryside and have um hired a beautiful caterer to come and like feed us all week well it's a midweek thing so it's like a Wednesday to Friday thing um and there are business owners coming um from a very like a really beautiful varied mix and so it's a retreat and then and then following the retreat the same group will be part of a mastermind together for three months um helping each other you know with their businesses and ideas and keeping accountable and I have all kinds of coaching tools and resources and business strategy work to do with them as well so I'm really excited about that uh and and that's that's a brand new thing that I'm I'm trying so this is this is the experiment stage and you'll uh, get based, loads of feedback first hand guess I'll get lots of feedback and um, I'll learn a lot uh which is you know it's fun but can be hard but it's all part of it and um, I just can't wait to like spend two and a half days with these amazing women who are doing great things and are ready to invest in themselves and yeah, I'm excited about that. So I hope to do more of those. Um, yeah, and then I have a I have an accelerator program, which is a a leadership program for women in business. That is kind of the sign my signature kind of bread and butter course that I uh, that I run every year, and it's eight months. Um, and I'm just finishing up with an amazing group. I'm actually going to be so sad. I finish with them next month. And um, we've been together for, you know, the last seven months. And then the new group is starting in September. So I can't wait to see who is going to be part of that, um, that accelerator program. Um, because it's always like when you get to spend that, that, that length of time with a group, it is really special. It really is so special. And the most rewarding thing in my work is, is seeing the collaboration of women that come together because of the spaces that I've been holding for them, you know? So I see, I love seeing that happen without any of my involvement, if you know what I mean. So I can see these different businesses doing little projects together, or this person is having this person into their space, or um, that is one of the most rewarding things for me. So yeah, no, I love being yeah. part, of, part of those groups because you see people growing in so many different aspects of their lives, not just yeah. the, the business aspect and the confidence as well. You see them coming out of themselves. Yeah, totally. It's it, And that is because, we, you know, when we get into spaces with other women and we realize that we're not all different, <laughs> really, and lots in lots of our own vulnerabilities and what we struggle with and what we're juggling, um, there's, you know, it fosters a real sense of safety to be able to um, be more bold and to know that there are other women watching you, not judging you, but totally having your back um, and are, are 
are wanting you to succeed, wanting you to to like be the most honest and true version of you in your business. And that's that's gold. Yeah, no, it really is. Well, where can people find out more about you? Mm, so melwiggins.com uh, has everything on there. It'll be up to date with whatever programs are running, um, how you can apply for programs or get, you know, find out when the next retreats and stuff are. Um, and then you can from there hopefully find a way to sign up to my mailing list and you'll be kept uh, in the loop of everything that's happening that way and also on Instagram. So Instagram, I'm at Mel Wiggins. Pretty simple. And your newsletters are fantastic, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yes. I love I love writing my newsletters. Yeah. <laughs> well, Val, thank you so much for your time. It's thanks for really having me, Suzanne. And um, good luck with all your courageous projects going forward. And you. And you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thanks for listening. And don't forget that all the episodes and links are on our website, thehubnewy.com. While you're there, you can stay tuned with what we're up to by subscribing to our mailing list. Subscribe on YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. And thanks again for being here. Powering Productivity is presented by me, Suzanne Murdoch, and produced by Emily Crosby Media.